What is up you guys, it's your boy JR back at it again with another video here at photographycourse.net and today we're going to talk about how to take amazing photos of lightning. So I'm pretty sure you've seen those spectacular lightning photographs, Mother Nature unleashing her fury in a breathtaking fashion. If you want to know how to photograph lightning, you're in luck. Since lightning photography can be dangerous, let's begin with staying safe. The best way to stay safe when taking photos of lightning is being in a structure or under an object that protects you from direct strike. And make sure to not use trees for cover because if a lightning strikes and it hits the tree, the electricity would flow through the roots and hit you. You also want to avoid being out in the open and being the tallest thing around because you will be the prime target for a lightning strike. The safest thing to do is stay in a building or in a car. Remember, though these lightning photographs are stunning, it is not worth risking your life for it. So issues of safety aside, you might be wondering where is the best part to take lightning photos? The awesome thing about lightning storms is it could happen anywhere. But you may wait for the right time of the year depending on where you live. So that actually requires a bit of planning ahead of time. So if it's sunny out and there's no lightning storm, you could go out and look for possible areas where you could photograph lightning. They should be close enough to where you live so that you won't have troubles traveling to that location. And the best view would have a large view of the sky. But of course, you would still need to have some foreground for dramatic effects. And don't forget the number one rule, stay safe. So when taking photos of lightning, there are a couple of things that you will be needing. Number one would be a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Now this is very important because you have to be able to manually set the aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and other aspects of your camera. You also must have the option of shooting in RAW instead of JPEG. It makes it a lot more easier for us in post-production when you shoot in RAW. The second thing that you need when taking photos of lightning would be a tripod. It is important to have a tripod with you because you will be setting your shutter speed to a longer length and you cannot rely on your steady hands. Even if your hand is super steady, it would tend to create a motion blur if you don't have a tripod with you. So always use your tripod. The third thing that you need would be a lens. So your lens should be a fast lens instead of a prime lens. That will give you additional flexibility when shooting lightning in distance. However, if you want to capture the breath of the storm, then a wide angle lens is a must. A wide angle lens eliminates guesswork because it captures a lot more sky. So you don't really have to guess which part of the sky it would strike because your wide angle lens could capture it all. The next thing that you need would be a cable release or infrared remote. When your shutter speed is long and then you manually press your camera, it would tend to have motion blur. So if you have a cable release or infrared remote with you, make sure to use it when taking photos of lightning. But of course, not everyone has that. So what you can do is set your camera timer to at least two seconds so it doesn't go off when you press it. Another thing that you might need when taking photos of lightning would be a lens cloth or a towel. Most of the times when there's lightning, there's rain. And a little drop of rain into your lens could ruin the picture. So make sure to occasionally wipe it. And for those who have the budget, you could also use a lightning trigger. The MIOPS camera trigger actually takes photos every time a lightning strikes. So all you have to do is set it up, you go somewhere safe, and every time there's a lightning strike, the camera would automatically take the photo for you using this equipment. And now that we're done with the things that you need when taking photographs of lightning, let's talk about the best camera settings. So for camera settings, number one would be manual mode. Since you are taking this usually at nighttime, it will not produce amazing photos when you set your camera to automatic, since automatic cameras cannot detect focus when it's dark. As for your ISO settings, go for the lowest amount that your camera could have. Some cameras would have 64 to 200, and most Nikon or Canon cameras would have a minimum of 100 ISO. This is especially important so that your photo would not be overexposed. It would be sad to take amazing lightning photos only to end up seeing an overexposed image. As for your shutter speed, you will need to have a lot of light enter your camera. So what you can do is set it to 5 seconds to 30 seconds. That will usually do the trick. But if you want amazing shadows on your foreground, you could set it to 1 second to 3 seconds. As for your aperture settings, if you don't have anything close, then you could start at f5.6. But if the image is a bit overexposed, you could go for f8 
or even f16 if you're shooting at 30 seconds. Now, as for composition, it's better if your lightning photo would be set up that it takes more of the sky rather than the foreground. You want the lightning to cover the majority of the picture, so 60% to 80% sky versus 20% to 40% foreground is the perfect fit. So there you have it folks, taking photos of lightning is really hard, but now that you know these tips, it will now be a lot easier for you to take amazing lightning photos. So if you want more photography tips, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you have additional tips for amazing lightning photography, don't forget to drop it in the comment section below. Again, my name is JR, and thanks for watching PhotographyCourse.net.